Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and guests. One of the following statements is true. The entire human race could fit into the volume of one sugar cube, or I am Superman. To begin, we need to understand a little bit of our universe. And when I say a little, I don't mean not much. I mean something so small that you can't even see it. But so fundamental that it's a part of everything. On this journey of learning this evening, we'll travel back in time. We'll visit a Greek philosopher, a patent clerk, Australia, and a few physicists. But let's start in Greece. One lovely day, a Greek philosopher by the name of Democritus was being all philosophical and studying the state of the universe. Particularly, he was ruminating on the idea of size. He had an object and he said if he cut it in half and cut it in half again, could he continue cutting in half forever? And he surmised that no. Eventually he would come to an object so small that he couldn't cut it any further. He called this object atomos, meaning literally uncuttable. And in one affable afternoon, acknowledged the atom, the fundamental building block of our universe. So it's 440 BC, and we have the philosophy of the atom. But it would be another 2100 years until we had the theory of the atom. In the 18th century, a mathematician by the name of Daniel Bernoulli came up with the theory of the atom. He correctly assumed that atoms had motion. And it was this motion of atoms smashing into each other that caused vibrations. As a contained gas, these vibrations create pressure, just as the air in a balloon makes the sides expand. His theory was that if he shrunk the container by half its size, then the, the pressure should double. Now, it's a simple theory, and as ubiquitous as pressure is to us today, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be until the 20th century before we had proof of the atom. Now, proof came from a couple of, couple of interesting locations. In part, it came from Australia. It came from a man named Robert Brown, who came to Australia in 1801 to study our unique flora. But it was in 1827 that he made his most unique discovery under the microscope. He noticed a peculiar attribute of pollen when suspended in water. The pollen would zigzag back and forth like drunkards lurching home from a pub. Damn it. This phenomenon, known as Brownian motion, would take another 80 years to be explained. And it would be explained by a young patent clerk by the name of Albert Einstein. Einstein correctly guessed that it was actually water molecules that were invisible that were bombarding the pollen to make it move around. He had a calculation that he said he could predict the movement of the pollen and the size of the water molecules and thus the size of the atom. It would take a physicist by the name of Jean-Baptiste Perrin to use the calculation to get a final figure of the size of the atom. His calculations showed that it would take one billion atoms lined up side by side to cover the width of one full stop on a regular type page. To say atoms are small is an understatement of the greatest magnitude. But more amazing discoveries were yet to come. As some of you may know, all matter is made up of atoms. And atoms are made up of a nucleus orbited by several negatively charged electrons. Now, when you ask people to imagine an atom, they usually think of the classic symbol of an atom with these three circles around it. But that couldn't be further from the truth. To get an idea of the atom, you need to think big. You need to think the solar system. The sun is the nucleus, and the planets are the electrons. If you could actually visit one of these electron planets, you wouldn't be able to see the others because they're too small and too far away. In actual fact, just like the solar system, most of the space that defines an atom's boundaries is empty. It's, 99, oh, sorry, it's greater than 99.9% .9 empty. 
it's 99.39% empty. Said differently, one, only one trillionth of the space in an atom actually matters, pun intended. So back to our original questions. Although a lot of you will probably think I do resemble the man of steel, <laughs> it was the first statement that was correct. The study of the universe is intricate and complex. As we study the large, we must study the very small in equal amount. The very small, the quantum, is so confusing, we need new, new laws of physics called quantum mechanics just to describe it. And we need massive particle accelerators smashing particles together to glean the smallest amount of new information. Each new morsel of information requires hundreds of scientific minds, thousands of man hours, and astronomical amounts of energy, and usually res results in more confusion than clarity. But as I've shown, most of what matters is empty space. If we could indeed shrink and crush all that empty space down, the entire human race would fit into the palm of your hand. Don't drop it though. <laughs> An object of that mass would pass straight through the earth like it wasn't even there. Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you.